wondering about the floor of G10 2018. Of course, 2018 would be the only G10 for the gathering since they are numerically uh, paneled, so to speak. And I've come across Harlan. How you doing, sir? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Listen, we just uh, chatted a little bit. Uh, couldn't help but notice that you've got a, uh, uh, quite a number of slingshots uh, of interesting uh, design. And uh, we're going to talk about that in a bit. But just first of all, um, where are you out of? Out of Portland, Oregon. Okay. Um, been there for 10 years now. Right. Uh, Oak Forge has been around for four of those years. Uh, been making since 2002, though. 2013? Two. Two. Okay, very good. And Oak is O-O-A-K. Correct. One of a kind forge. One of a kind, one of a kind forge. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, nothing like those. I'm sure you're not working for some, uh, you know, three-letter agency? <laughs> <laughs> Promise. All those guys come up with those. So, um, what was your, what, what, what got you into building tools? And obviously we've got tools, we've got knives, uh, interesting pizza cutter, and a, a plethora of swing shots. Uh, building tools, honestly, one of the first things I made was a uh, all-steel tomahawk. Uh, not too far off uh, from this design right here. Actually, on this card, this is the Instinct Tomahawk, was one of the first ones I made. And I made that. Um, and a bit of a traditional shape there as well. A bit of a traditional trying shape. trying to think of what... Uh, what uh, culture used that, but uh, it's, it's escaping me now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been around a while, yeah. yeah. So, and that Instinct design is uh, 12 years old now, um, still make it pretty often, and then uh, got into slingshots for fun. Um, you know, it's just, we, we like to bring things back, like uh, the pizza cutter as well. It's, it's got its use, but typically when you think of a pizza cutter, it's it goes in the drawer, it's not pretty, it's not fun, it's not ceremonial. And, and especially if you're working at a pizzeria. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, Why don't you go ahead and grab that real quick and you can highlight it. The rock and I take the wire nuts. The plastic <laughs> wire nuts and I launch them. Yeah. So this is actually all titanium, um, except for the brass hardware. Um, the blade is grade five. It's on ball bearings. This one's 80, these are 60. Yeah, so we have a lot of fun with these. Like My grandfather owns Polly Eyes Pizza. Oh wow, that is a, a, a highly stable blade too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my grandfather's had a pizza restaurant for 40 plus years, and uh, I wanted to commemorate that. And that's where the Pizza Slayer design came from. And the Pizza Slayer. The Pizza Slayer, yes. Is well earned that name. God forbid that end up in a crime scene. <laughs> What, what, what is your uh, price point to that pizza cutter? I think this uh, all titanium is going for 480. Uh, the brass and copper models start at 220. Okay. We try to keep them fairly priced. That grade five grind was uh, not fun, hence the price. <laughs> Can imagine, especially something that, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So uh, what's what's uh, next on the lineup? How about the slingshots? The slingshots, uh, one of our most popular is the Horny Monster, which has a bottle opener, uh, hex key, uh, impact tool, and these little bands will shoot a .177 BB, like a little Red Rider BB, around 280 feet per second. Interesting. So they are really fun. And then we have the super minimal uh, straight shooter, the arc shooters, and then we have our phallic flippers. Which has a little bottle opener on the bottom. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Because you never know when you got to pop the beer of brew, you know, yeah. uh, while you're uh, zinging uh, copper BBs at your buddies. Yeah. The, and these 5 8 bands will shoot a uh, 3 8 ball bearing at around 280 feet per second. Okay, well, okay. So, yeah. Probably not the best thing to be shooting at a buddy. Yeah, yeah. Gummy bears are good, though. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There's the. <laughs> Yeah, that so could turn ugly real quick. Yeah, like, they leave a good well. Okay, top very top good. Any, of course, you've got some... Uh, are called pickle shooters. That's yeah, our paperweights um, has right. and so the way essentially defined our, our, side, our company logo. Yeah, and you turn the um, pouch towards you. And yeah, and we, we produce these yourself. about four times a year. Yeah. And uh, we do them in copper and brass. They're half inch thick. Got a little bottle opener and hex key teeth and nostrils. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Price point on your uh, paper weight. The paper weight <laughs> are they're hundred dollars flat. Doesn't matter the material or the the size. We do have two different sizes. 
Okay, interesting. And uh, price point on your uh, slingshot? Our, our slingshots range from, these are 75, and when these go online, they go kind of within minutes. Um, and then we, we go all the way down to 45 for the uh, nut shots. And then we have titanium slingshots that go upwards of three to four hundred dollars, well, depending on how much work it goes into. Exactly, we get really fancy with handle materials, and uh, actually, there's one on this our little portfolio here. So that's got a bunch of bronze, titanium, and the, uh, honeycomb resin scales. Okay. The time. Looks like you're getting your beads as well. Yeah, we've always so used these little beads. We put the They're bead all on individually so hand ground, yeah. so. None are, none are alike. We, those are our polywog knives. They're nice when you can put uh, spare parts to good use. Absolutely. To artistic yeah. good use. Nothing goes to waste. Yeah, yeah. Those are the little drops from... Yeah, okay. Very good. So if somebody really wanted to get artistic... I'm sorry. Even though oh, yeah, I'm not... Yeah. Feel free to grab a sticker. <laughs> a, a melian A, I believe, is what it's called, but I'm going to butcher that one, too. Very good. Anything else on the... Uh, on the up and coming, Harlan. Uh, uh, up and coming, we're producing more we landscape folders right, right now, which are uh, really depends. Three hundred to four hundred dollar range. We're trying to make them more. This is the landscape folder, which is just a little so friction like folder. A okay. It's a uh, very convenient size. It's a, it's a attractive enough that if anybody wants to see it in a place where you might not be carrying knives, they're going to want to look at it because they're interested in it. Not because they're worried about why you have a knife. Right. And, and it's, a, and it's a tool. It's a functioning tool. It's a tool. It's a friction folder. There's no locking for, mechanism. So it's, it's legal so legal in countries like the UK, uh, across Europe. I've traveled with these. And that's why I created this, it was a knife that I could travel with. Very good. And I don't like friction folders because a lot of them they can close in your hand, but this one can't. Ah, uh, you've got, uh, yeah. And you're also yeah, grabbing a majority of the blade when you're using this. Like I said, we put so that beat on It feels like a mixed blade. Yeah, yeah. Very good. And how long have you been making the folders? I've been making the landscape folder for three years now. Um, we've kind of moved up into some higher grade materials. We've been doing Timascus and Damascus. Um, potentially looking to make a flipper out of it because it's been a popular shape um, and there's a, a number of people out there that are they want something that's going to open and lock right so well there's a, there's an in, there's almost like a, a gut level reaction to not being able to lock your right and unless you can feel it in person yeah. some people aren't going to have the confidence but everybody who feels it in person goes oh i would i would buy this friction folder okay <laughs> okay now I gotta ask, uh, how long you been in the distillery business? <laughs> oh, the flasks. So the flasks are funny. I found out recently that in the early 1900s, uh, bars would give out flasks to their really solid patrons, and they called them whimsies. 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 Okay, whimsies. like a whimsy. It's give a whimsy. It away on a whimsy. Whimsy. Yeah, it's a whimsy. So we wanted to produce these as as people who just wanted to appreciate our product and. Uh, I don't know. We just wanted to have something that was a. We give these away pretty often. Like right. About once or twice a month, we'll give away a flask. So. Like a little premium for, for clients, customers. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah, and they're 14 karat gold on all of the uh, the labels. Right. So yeah, they've they've been fun. And a, a ceramic or a. Uh, they're ceramic cone six, so they're really tough. I've dropped it on concrete twice in my personal life. Oh, they're, wow. They're pretty tough. Okay. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, listen, all the best luck to you. Yeah. You travel safe home, and uh, you're going to be attending Blade West. We will be at Blade West. I think you mentioned, if I recall correctly, you were one of the first uh, registrants. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Regi and we will be hosting Did a little barbecue. with that? Registrant. Yeah. Registrant. Uh, registrant. Okay, good deal. Well, and it's good uh, good territory to be in the knife industry. It is. Uh, we're, you know, Portland is uh, becoming a knife mecca. Yeah. Um, all the big manufacturers there, some really amazing heat treating facilities. And, yeah. Good deal. Good place. Well, listen, all the best fortune with us. All right. Thank you.